who ran for president, promising to change federal law, to allow illegals to apply for driver's licenses, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you still support those things? You've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person that oh, in the office. Come on. Madam you Vice President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? This is one of my frustrations throughout. She pretended that the president has absolutely nothing to do with the law. <laughs> she needs that little schoolhouse rock. I'm just a bill. So she can figure out that when you're president, you actually are the one who signs the bills into law and who actually comes up with a lot of policy prescriptions that you then work for and advocate for with Congress, which writes the bills. But they don't become law without a veto. When Kamala Harris deflects criticism by pretending that her role as vice president or president-in-waiting has no connection to shaping or advocating laws, she's doing more than dodging accountability. She's mocking you and undermining you as if you, the voter, doesn't know how leadership works in America. The president doesn't just sit passively and react to Congress. He or she sets the agenda, fights for policy, and directs the national conversation. For Kamala to dismiss this role shows either a lack of grasp on governance or a strategic play to keep voters in the dark about the actual power she wields. This is a trend we've seen growing, shifting the blame while pushing a radical agenda behind the scenes. Consider the broader implications. Promising illegal immigrants free health care, tuition, and driver's licenses might sound compassionate, but it's a strategy that has very real, long-term consequences for American taxpayers and the integrity of our legal system. It sends a clear message. If you break the law to enter, you'll be rewarded with benefits that even legal citizens have to fight for. And the most concerning part is how these policies are pushed quietly, under the guise of compassion, without open debates or proper accountability. In short, Megyn Kelly's criticism isn't just about calling out Kamala's tactics. It's about emphasizing the necessity for transparency and accountability in leadership. Uh, unless you sign them. As the president, you need to sign the bills for them to become the laws. Why? Is she just, like, she's just some plebe. I, well, I'll follow the law. No, no, no. You're in a position to actually make law. You're in a position to make law. And you said you wanted to make these laws. Do you still follow that or don't you? She's kept dodging with that stupid line. And it's an empty line meant to dodge her real pres policy prescriptions because why would she not just own it? What's the reason to not embrace those earlier policies? Because she still holds them and they're very unpopular. So that's what she did. I don't understand, like, these media writers out there may not know what it's like to be a Republican or an independent or a right-leaning person and how frustrating it is to watch her get away with her, her lies. It's, it's a soothing balm to watch somebody actually confront her with the real facts. Okay, your stupid amnesty bill in 2021, which you purported to be a tough-on-the-border bill, was a joke from day one. It was your Democrat-controlled House that killed it, and the White House didn't push it. See, Politico, at the time, you tried it. Stop trying to refer to that like it was your day one priority. What you actually did on day one was issue a bunch of executive orders that undid all of Trump's harder border policies, like remain in Mexico, like cracking down on the, the number of asylum claims, like you reversed the building of the wall and sold off the parts uh, for, for cash. What, like, that's what she did. And all she can do is lie now. She recently stumbled upon the fact, oh, gee, we had a 2021 bill that was kind of amnesty with a couple of border enforcement things. I'll just tout that like it's real. It wasn't. The Dems killed it. And then she goes right to her 2024 border effort that oh, we had Republicans con uh, cooperating with us and Trump killed it because he'd rather run on a problem than run on a solution. We've heard that a million times, right? Like that's all she's got. And as for the three and a half years between those two points, she's got nothing. So he presses her in a great way by bringing up some of the families that you guys have seen and heard from on this show, the victims of her policies and Biden's policies. She and Joe Biden opened the border and we had 10.4 million illegals come through. And the tens of thousands of them turned out to be criminals of one sort or another. Immigration is one of their biggest issues and her taking no responsibility None whatsoever. And just trying to shove that fake border bill down their throat. It's a fail. It's a fail. What are you doing there? How is any of that any different from all that you've done in this race so far? Aren't you looking 
to rejigger things? Aren't you looking to move the needle? That's not the way. That's not going to do it. So once again, she failed to own up to what she and her administration have done. Um, so she keeps going to say, OK, you know, um, but they stay on immigration. He says, look, you you kept saying the border was secure during this time. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? And she goes on. Well, we've had a broken immigration system transcending even Donald Trump's administration. Let's be honest about it. OK, now we're talking. OK, are you going to have your moment or you're like, you know, it's bad. I admit it's bad. And we made it worse. Maybe you do that. And then you do the pivot. And here's how I'm going to improve it, because I was just VP, not P, not P. And then she goes, I've been clear. She, she said that all night when she wasn't. I think we all are clear that it needs to be fixed. And then she she goes on to say, OK, we need more judges at the border. We need to process these cases faster. And what she doesn't say is we need to stop them from coming in in the first place. It's not that we need to adjudicate their claims faster. Yes, that's a piece of it. We need to stop them from coming across the border to begin with. That was the main thing Trump did. And she doesn't speak to it because she doesn't plan to do that. She doesn't plan to do that. So that's what she says. And, and to get those resources, you know, for the judges, because she went to the border, she, which she pointed out. She spent like a half an hour at the border. Now she wants us to believe she's an expert. And now you have talked to these guys and they need more money for these resources. Congress is the only place that that's going to get that fixed. Right. But there is a ton you can do via executive order that you refuse to do. In fact, you took executive actions the other way. Just say you'll do them. Just say you'll do the executive actions that Trump did. Just say that if you're really committed to shoring up the border. But she's not. So she tries to just say, oh, well, they need more financial resources. And that can only come from Congress. My hands are tied. My hands are tied. Brett, to his credit, again, fires back with there were 90 plus executive orders that were rescinded in the first days. Many of those were Trump border policies. And then he's got to move on. He's already spent like four or five questions on immigration. I would have done the same. Um, but he pivots to you. You claim you talked to the Border Patrol. Well, their union just endorsed Trump saying, quote, you've been a failure. Why do you think they said that? Now, I get what he was doing there. I, I will say I would have. That's too open ended. It just gives her a platform. I would have said, why did you rescind those orders? Why did you stop the wall? Why did you rescind remain? In, why? Why did you rescind remain in Mexico? Why did you open up the expansive a, a possibility of applying for asylum. Why? Sometimes the whys are the hardest questions. Anyway, she went on to say, oh, they're they're frustrated. They want support, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, it wasn't it, fine. The Biden administration, with Kamala Harris at the helm on immigration, has consistently dodged direct responsibility for the border crisis. Instead of acknowledging their missteps or the impact of rolling back Trump's tougher policies, Harris continues to use deflection tactics. Claiming that her hands are tied by Congress is not only misleading, it's an attempt to escape the consequences of her administration's own executive decisions. It is also ironic because it seems like the only thing that consists of Kamala's vocabulary is blame Trump and cry for Trump to take accountability, when she herself is brutally allergic to taking accountable for ruining America alongside Biden. Think about it. Right from the start, this administration rescinded over 90 executive orders, many of which were essential to maintaining border integrity. They halted construction of the wall, ended the Remain in Mexico policy, and eased asylum restrictions. And now they're dealing with a surge of over 10 million illegal immigrants since Biden took office, with thousands of criminals among them. The consequences are real, not just in numbers, but in human cost. Look at the victims of crimes committed by individuals who should have never entered the country in the first place. Families that Harris and Biden refuse to acknowledge in their narrative. What's frustrating for many conservatives and independents is watching this administration act like their approach is hands off. When in reality, they've taken significant steps that directly reversed hard won policies designed to secure our border. When you're in a position of leadership, you don't just passively observe, you shape policy, you take responsibility and you answer to the people. Anything less is just evasion.